how to pollinate Nepenthes flowers. We get a lot of questions about how to pollinate flowers. Um, sometimes that information can be pretty fiercely guarded because sometimes it's kind of complicated and you know, some of us do make our livelihoods this way, but this is one that's fairly common knowledge and mostly we don't hold anything back anyways. So we'll talk about how to pollinate these amazing tropical pitcher plants. The first lesson is, whereas I think all other carnivorous plant flowers, yeah, I think all others, have male and female parts on the same flower. Um, hermaphroditic, for the lack of a better word. Um, but Nepenthes don't. Nepenthes have male flowers or they have female flowers. So they actually, believe it or not, have an odd sort of gender. You know, plants have sometimes gender however you want to call that. This one here is male. I can tell that because it has this little stem and at the end is an anther that is covered in pollen. You can notice that there are lighter ones up at the top here and then darker yellow kind of powdery looking ones down at the bottom. The flowers open uh, from the bottom up. Sometimes that will take like a week or so. Sometimes it's only a few days. It kind of depends on the plant. Um, these ones up here that have just opened haven't had time to extrude pollen out of the anthers, and so I don't want to do anything with these. These bright yellow ones down here, what you're actually seeing is the pollen that is extruded out and is ready to be collected somehow. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. Usually I'm just going to pull an entire anther off of there, or an entire flower off of there, I should say. And you want to do this kind of gently because the pollen will fall away. Usually what I'll do is I'll take these tweezers, I'll grab the sepals right there, those little layers are sepals, and then I'll just gently, oh, not so gently, pull it away. Whoop. And I've done this many, 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 many times, and that will not harm this flower at all. That's totally safe and okay to do. I'm going to hold this off to the side and then we'll talk about another way to do it. So this is a little tiny paintbrush. I prefer dark bristles and a nice flat, you can get like flat ones or round ones. The flat ones are really great for this. I can't say for painting, but I will say that the flat ones are good for seeing, uh, for collecting the pollen because you can kind of scrape it off on one surface. And then also the black ones are nice because of the dark bristles because you can actually see the pollen. A lot of times I'll get this wet. Um, I don't have any water around here right now, but I'll just dip it in the water and then just kind of squeeze out any excess water. In the wild, there's going to be rain. They're from the rainforest, so it's going to be humid and there's going to be rain. And so you don't want to store your pollen wet, obviously, but it's totally fine for some water to be involved. Let's see if I can do this with this hand. Let's grab this. Multitasking. And over here, I should be able to just scrape this anther and also get some pollen on there. So there, there's some pollen on there. This is why I mostly prefer to pull the entire flower off because you will get more pollen over there that way than I will this way. I show the brush because if I ever mail you pollen in a little um, tin foil packet, this is the way to do it. If you try to use the tweezers when they're dry, there's really nothing to grab onto. I'll never put the sepal part in there. I'm just going to put the little button part in there and it's totally dehydrated and it's very hard. And when you try to tweezer those, they tend to just shoot off into nowhere. And so that's a good time to use the brush is you have to collect it out of something. That's when I'll use the brush. But let's head on over to a female flower, see what that looks like and see the not so complicate, complicated process of putting this on there. Okay, so here we are over at our female flower. That was Nepenthes undulatifolia pollen that I was just taking off there. You probably saw cute little tubby pictures. This is Aristolocuoides vitaliensis. And I'm going to cross these two together because I'm hoping to get really cute tubby spotty pictures. Why not? This one's cool. And undulatifolia has not flowered very many times in cultivation, so these hybrids are still pretty rare. These are female, this is the female flowers here. 
you can, it's a little deceptive because uh, I already pollinated these this morning. So you can see there is some yellow pollen on there. But before that, like that one doesn't really have any pollen on it right there. Before that, it's just a little green platform where pollen can land. Normally it'd be a bug that would do this in the wild and it'd be landing there, eating the nectar off of it and accidentally brushing pollen from another plant on there. Here, I'm gonna be the weird little bug. So with this, I can usually just bump it right on there. See all the yellow coming off? And there we go. And that's plenty. I could do the same thing with this brush where I'm just rubbing the pollen on that flower there and trying to get down there as much as possible. The business part of this flower is that little green platform. This thing behind it is the um, ovary that will swell full of seeds if pollination is, is uh, successful, but you don't want to put any pollen down low, that won't do anything. They're also going to open from the bottom up, generally, and so the freshest flowers here will be at the top. As soon as it's opened and you can see that little platform, you can pollinate it. The entire point of plants, basically, is to make flowers, and the part, entire point of flowers is to make seeds. And so if you give it the opportunity, it's going to really want to do it. The pithy's flowers don't smell very nice, generally. Some of them do smell a little spicy. Some of them do smell like honeycomb, but they're generally not the nicest smelling thing. But if you're ever wondering, is the flower still receptive and it's been open for a little while, a good, school of th a good uh, rule of thumb is to give it a little sniff. And if you get a weird little smell on there, it's a good chance that it's still um, receptive because it's still putting out fragrance to attract pollinators. So that's like a good trick. If it's successful, that's the next question we always get. How do I know that the pollination worked? So <clears throat> this is one that I pollinated with Pitopangii a little while ago. And you can probably see at the end, that green platform on those two is now brown. And that is generally a good sign. They're going to probably turn brown sooner or later, but if it turns brown after a few days of putting pollen on there, that's generally a good sign. There are a lot of ifs and buts along the way on actually whether it will work out. Sometimes the ovary will swell and there will be no seeds. Sometimes the ovary won't bother to swell at all. Another thing to talk about real briefly, and it's really nice because I have this right here. This is an old flower spike. And it's just now starting to open up. And all of these, you can see all these old female flowers never swelled up and got big. And so there are no seeds in there. Down here, ones that I did pollinate and it was successful. You can see I pollinated these, but it did nothing. I guess that pollen was old. But down in here, this is by Mollus. I think I already collected the Velosa. Those ones did work. And you can tell by those chubby little pods. Those will probably have some seeds in there. It might not all be full of seeds, but there'll probably be some seeds in there. And then just to take another quick thing, it's often a problem with new people. See all that dust falling off of there? Why is he losing all those seeds? He's wasting all those seeds. Stop it, stop it. These are dummy seeds. Not to be insulting, you probably barely see them on there. <laughs> but people generally call these dummy seeds. I think Peter might have been the first one to say that in his snarky New Jersey little voice. Um, but many, 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 many people confuse what those things are for actual seeds. You can tell they're not seeds because they're like fine, fine dust. And a real Nepenthes seed will have a swelling in the middle where the uh, embryo of the seed is. And so if there's a little swelling in the middle and two long hairs, that's how you know that those are actual seeds. If it's just fine, fine dust, not seeds, don't bother.